Uh, so good, good evening, everyone. This evening, I'm joined by um, a, a bunch of dudes that call themselves, not me, call themselves the ignorant millennials. Like, you're not wearing your t-shirts today. It's cool, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, that, is not, that is not what I call you. <laughs> that is what you call you. And we'll discuss that later. And um, I came across one of, one of their videos on YouTube uh, not too long ago. Uh, discussing stuff about the journey and the qualifications stuff relating to to being a chartered accountant etc and i just i really love uh, i really loved your energy i really love the humor i really love the, the authenticity and i just think we need more of those types of conversations around um just education in general professional regardless of whether we're talking about ca or non-ca or whatever but just we need to be having more conversations around stuff like this so i contacted them and um apparently because there's a lockdown and they've got nothing better to do, they said that they'd talk to you. <laughs> If there wasn't a lockdown, there'd be no discussion, but since they've got nothing better to do with their lives, they said to me, so, so well done. So um, here we go around, <laughs> can we go around, Jen? And um, if you can just kind of introduce yourself and give like a very brief little bio of who you are and what you're doing and kind of a little bit of your educational background since we are sort of discussing professional-ish stuff. That would be all right. right. Okay, all right. Um, Lance, you can start. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's always like to be here. This is actually quite weird for me because I'm used to asking people to, you know, but yeah, I'll do my best. So I'm told <laughs> animal. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a general accountant recently qualified, it's just been over a year now. Okay, uh, I'm from a small village. Oh. Most people call it a village in Mpumalang and Nelspruit called okay. Matsulu. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I decided I wanted to be a general accountant in grade 11 when I was told I was going to make a lot of money. Yeah, well, I guess I sold dreams, but yeah. I went ahead with it. I did my undergrad and postgrad at the University of Pretoria. Okay. And also did my, I did my articles at... The, the Department of National Treasury. Okay. And I'm currently at the small enterprise finance agency where I'm a relationship manager. Okay, very interesting. We'll definitely discuss more of um, uh, more of the stuff, especially the part where you were lied to about how much money you were going to be making. Because <laughs> 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 that's what everybody's waiting for. Everybody that watches the videos are waiting for, okay, when, is, when are they going to tell me? <laughs> when are they going to tell me in the salary? All right. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll shoot. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Gatero, uh, but people call me Cat. Um, so yeah, I I'm a business analyst by profession. I studied accounting at the University of Witwatersrand uh, here in Johannesburg, South Africa. And yeah, so I wanted to become a CA. Okay. Then, um, I later on. Uh, in my final year, decided I don't want to become a CA anymore because uh, I was introduced to auditing <laughs> and not in second year or first year. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. that was like a deal breaker. So, how I became obviously aware of accounting. So, um, I went to what is uh, called a former modesty school here in South Africa. So, then we had. Um, I think it was called Ernest and Young. Now they just go by E. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And KPMG and PwC, they came to our school. So then they brought a bunch of CAs. Weird thing is, I should have seen it there. They all were driving jetters. I should have known this money is really not true. <laughs> they all were driving jetters. And you know what? It is, it is auditing. It is auditing that teaches you. <laughs> <laughs> so... I should have figured out there that now. Nah, why are you driving a Jetta if you tell me there's money here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's, where's the Jag? Where's the BM? Where's the oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that's a bit about me. Uh, with that being, I guess we'll just uh, get to know me better yep. throughout the course as well. well. We'll unpack more as we go. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Cool. Uh, hi, everyone. I am not an IT in any way. I mean, in a class. <laughs> in any like zero, nothing, I don't know anything. Um, I'm in IT, I'm yep. a software developer, I work for an insurance company, 
I went to the same school as uh, that guy wearing the black shirt there. I went to the same high school, I went to the same varsity, so University of Pretoria. Okay. I in a small town called Barberton. Um, in yeah, I'm a, I'm more of a nerd. Um, I like algorithms and I'm not a fan of numbers. Um, as to why I picked this profession, um, I've always just been that guy who was like ripping CDs for guys and like okay. songs <laughs> and memes. Yeah. Yeah. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> 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 well, we'll, keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep that between so, us. <laughs> just between us. So yeah, so I was always that type of person and then I just fell in love with um, IT at a very young age. I, it was nothing else for me. Yeah. Or computer engineering. They, right. they had to some form of electronics okay, involved okay All right. yeah. okay so we got we got a really nice we got a really really nice split and i think um the <clears throat> one of the things you know is is and, and you, like you mentioned that you know two of you mentioned that like the expectation gap you know what yes. you're told and sold when yes. when you're younger when you know the firms and the people and the recruitments and companies tell you this yes. is what your life yes. is going to be like this is what yes. the career is like yes. so what do you yes. what do you feel was your biggest like oh crap what <laughs> <laughs> you know like your biggest expectation gap when you started working like for for all of you cuz you know regardless of what profession we're in yeah. When you're studying, you have an idea of what's going to happen when you get to the workplace. And then when you actually start yes. work, it's a bit like, yes. why did nobody yes. tell me that I needed to learn how to yes. use a photocopy machine? <laughs> like, a photocopy so, machine. You're joking, but that's true. Eh? No, I'm not joking. <laughs> I know that. Like, that's the thing. Whenever you walk, like you can always spot, you can spot the newbies at any office by standing around the photocopy machine and just waiting because you'll see people yes. walk in and they're like, yes, with a piece of paper and they're kind of like waiting to watch someone else like how to photocopy, <laughs> which, photocopy is there, which button do you press? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what was your biggest expectation gap that you were expecting and then didn't get, or just never expected to come across when you started? All right. Uh, Lance? Yeah. Uh, so I think for me, uh, you know, like you said, uh, the salary thing, but then I guess maybe that wasn't like a bit far-fetched. I think it was just my imagination as a kid at that time, you know, you get told you make a lot of money, but also yeah. maybe that's, that's relative, you know, because you get to a place, you're thinking, ah, first job, I'll buy myself yeah. an M3. Yeah. But then you realize, oh, what, I just started. I'm actually a trainee. There's yeah. no way I'm going to buy an MP. I think the older you get, then you realize, actually, your expectations that you had as a kid were unrealistic as well. Yeah. yeah. And I think my biggest old crap was when you realize I got to, you know, as a trainee, I got there. I was told to do a bunch of financials. And I'm, you know, I'm like, okay. Is anyone gonna run me through this? And they were like, "No, man. We all we all busy with our own thing. Just figure it out." I was like, um, "Oh crap." Okay. Google. Yeah. <laughs> I think the training where uh, I I was, which was the Department of National Treasury, was a bit different in the fact that mm. it wasn't. They didn't expect you to, you, you, they were training you, but they expected you to do the things, you know. Yeah. Uh, they expect you to be part of the team. If yeah. you go to a certain team, they expect you to be, depending on your qualification, which at the time was a postgraduate, they expect you to be a senior analyst. And yeah. you have yeah. come up with solutions. So instead of them actually, you know, trying to teach uh, you all the time, you need to be coming up with solutions on the spot. Yeah. And it's a matter of, uh, more of like, no, you're here to work and you get to trade. You yeah. do get the trade as you go along, you pick up things, you learn a lot. Yeah. But it was really like, yo, you need to hit the ground running and yeah. just impress us as much as you can. Yeah. I think, I think you, my, you, yeah. you raise a really good saying. point there. Like, I really like because um, most, you know, when you're studying, you get the textbook, you get the material and then you're like, this is how you do it. And then by the time you do the question, you're like, I know what I'm doing. Uh, or that's how we think it works. You know, this is what you're supposed to do. So that when I go and work, I know everything. 
like, you know, nothing's yeah. going to be a surprise and I know everything. And in reality... Yeah, there's no question in, in your work, you know. No there's, one no gonna, there's no solution. No question paper, no solution. No solution. No one no. marking. And I think students kind of have this idea that one day when I'm finished studying, then all that performance anxiety around exams is going to go away. You know, I won't have to worry about failing exams and I won't have to worry about getting the question wrong. And I'm like, dude, when you're working, every day is an exam. Like performance anxiety, like every day is an exam because then, you know, your boss or your manager is like, here's a project, can you please do this for me? And you're like, uh, can I, can you a template for that? <laughs> can you tell me exactly what you want from me? Where's the manual? Where's the thick book? Whatever. So one of the things I say to students and especially the younger students who, you know, like have less experience with stuff, I'm like, spoiler alert to people, <clears throat> the real world is a lot harder than studying. Like, yes. <laughs> the <real world laughs> that is true. Harder than studying. And they're like, this isn't what I signed up for. Cause I thought when, when I got my degree, yes. I would know everything, you know, mm. I'm, I'm done. I know the answer. I'm going to go work and then I'll know what to do. When in reality, every day you get to work, it's like, okay, what on earth, how do I, like, how do I do this now? What? And you're like, it's just daily, just a, like a daily struggle of feeling stupid. So I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's, that's a classic expectation gap from students that when I'm finished studying, I'll know everything. Yes. That's that adorable. Is... <laughs> <laughs> so from my side, I think, um, so with me, like varsity, high school and so forth, I, I legit thought I was going to be like the Harvey Specter. Uh, really? Ever I'm working for a billions <laughs> type of environment. I thought that's what CAs do. A fancy suit, tie. And the yeah. And so forth, you know, tailored suits, basically. So, yeah, that was um, what I initially thought. Then, obviously, um, so I worked at an auditing firm. Yeah. So prior to working at a limited firm, like I, I previously mentioned, uh, the uh, Virgin University, you, we, back then, they only introduced auditing at, on a third year yeah. level. So then when I was doing auditing, then it's like, okay, then they were, it was like, okay, so most of us obviously are not going to have the opportunity to work at a, at a bank or an investment firm to mm -hmm. serve our there so most likely serve at a auditing firm so then it just seemed like okay so basically my job is gonna be to chase after people like a policeman and that's what it seemed like then i'm yeah, like yeah. okay just a corporate policeman <laughs> basically like show me proof or whatever and so forth then i was like no thank you i don't think this is really what i want to do and so forth okay. So then, yeah, still there after. So obviously after I completed my degree and everything else, um, I worked at KPMG. However, um, yeah, they told me, so I was not going to serve my articles per se. So they put me in the management uh, consultancy uh, division. But in it, uh, for the first couple of months, they actually, uh, well, I was basically doing what uh, the guys who were serving the articles were doing. Okay, so, yeah in actual sense so even then yeah so then i felt a bit like maybe a bit of a harvey specter because you know when you when you're chasing people because now in audience and whatever people just fear you whenever you you come into them they're like oh no not that guy again <laughs> so then it did meet my expectation a little bit there uh but pretty much yeah what i then discovered is uh pretty much the the first three years after you've done your article, I mean, after you've done your, your honors and you're serving your articles in that three years, pretty much it's a huge, 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 huge uh, learning cycle. Yeah. And you are uh, at the bottom. Like yeah. Yeah. you are literally at the bottom. You run around, uh, especially in your first couple of months, they tell you, hey, yeah. do the run. And it's very long hours as well yeah. Uh, yeah. that are involved. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's basically what what happened with me. <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> you, you had a tough time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think me, it was more of a shock 
that there's so many other things that you have to learn that are not like part of your technical knowledge that you came with. From yeah, process. right. So now you get there and all of a sudden, like you're in so many meetings, like so many meetings. You have to like, there's yeah, this yeah. etiquette, unspoken etiquette that yeah. you have to follow. And mm-hmm. you only learn this, like the more meetings you go. And then emails, like emails are such oh. a huge thing. No one ever tells you about these things of email. You have to write in a certain manner and you structure it. And if you, and if you just CC the wrong person, Ooh, you're, drama. you're just going to have like a, like a <laughs> bad week. Um, so one thing that really helped me was during my graduate program, like they would have like a, um, a people skills type of course, like okay. a, were they? Yeah. so they know tell you and then it, it, it helped ease you into the, yeah. to the world. Right. Yeah. And then the, the other thing I learned that is very important is networking. <gasps> so much. Yo, yo, yo. So like, I never so struggled. You, you'd, you'd need a CA or something or you need someone in facilities or you need yeah. someone like everywhere. And if you are a very quiet person, well, I, let's try. Yeah. You're, not, you're, you're, all, you're honestly going to struggle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, there's, yeah. I, I don't see a way for you for it. Yeah. Uh, being stuck in a little desk at a corner and just uh, working your way, like basically nowhere. Um, yeah. So being local about everything really helps. And also having a trail of everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the, um, like the cover your ass, the CYA. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Everywhere you go. And they don't tell you these things when you no, just... They don't. You're no, they just coding. You're like, oh, okay. I'm going to build these amazing systems. You get, wow, meeting, meeting one, meeting two. Actually, in like seven meetings, I have not done any work today. I was just in meetings all day. I, I think one of the other things for me is also, like, I expect when I have my own office. Yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Corner <laughs> office, then, window, with the yeah, view. Yeah, like, 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 small. Open planes and yeah. everything. So, to this your day, own secretary I, I, with your, like... I blame American American series. Oh, yeah, I can't blame TV, man. <laughs> so to, that was one of the other things. Like, wait. So basically, I'm like in a library where I can talk. That's what it felt like. <laughs> in your cubicle. In your cubicle, it's like this is a library, but I yeah. can just talk now in the yeah, library. I'm like, I can talk. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay, so. so so like one of the things, it's so, it's so funny that you said, like all the things that you picture in your head that's like glamorous about all of this crap, yes. like chuck it out yes. the window. Like, no. <laughs> chuck it out. <laughs> chuck it out the window. Like, it's all crap. <laughs> it's you're, you're not sitting doing like, imp- you're, you're not sitting doing impressive work. You know, like you say, yes. sitting coding for eight hours a day that you yes. come up at the end and go, look what I made today. No, you're sitting in freaking meetings and bureaucracy yes. and emails and yes. did you respond? Yes. And, yes, sir. Yes. I'd like to confirm our discussion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thing too, if you could yes. please forward me the above mentioned information as previously mm. requested. Mm. Five million yeah. times. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> And you also <laughs> won't, you won't do everything that you studied. Like no. you just give no. a small portion, probably like twenty no. percent of what you studied, you'll actually apply at work. Um, and then the other gaps actually filled in when you're actually there. Um, yeah. there's a lot of stuff you learned that you never knew. And then the other eighty yeah. percent you ask yourself, why? Why? It's just sitting there and no. They are, I'm not even able to apply it anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. That's, it's, so, it's so interesting and it's, it's so sad, but it's so interesting the distortion, you know, from the studying to the reality, you know, like what you mm. think you get, what, you know, all the classes and the subjects and the topics mm. that you study and then you actually work and as you say, all these like, all these yeah. other skills that, yeah. um, <clears throat> and one of the things you mentioned was the, like the people skills. Um, and I think in, in IT, it, IT is very similar, like anything computer related is very similar to the accounting stuff where people go, oh, you're not a people person. You know, you're, yes. you have no yes. personality. You're just a geek in a corner in a gray suit. Um, and then, you know, 
people think that's who they have to be. That's one thing. I find like students are like, I don't have an accountant personality. I don't know what an accountant personality is. Like I haven't yet met an accountant personality. I don't actually know what that is. Um, <clears throat> but two, you have to be a people person. Like you have to be a people person. Cause like you say, you're sitting in meetings all day. You're like, chasing people to get stuff from them. And I need, and I'm in a library all day. So I've got to get along with the people around me. <laughs> like I'm working with and my clients and the stuff and managers. And blah, blah, blah. So people skills are crucial. Like people skills are. Yeah. And also, I mean, uh, one thing that they also don't teach you um, is your emotional intelligence. <gasps> so true. Uh, so true. You know, you know, you get to a place where authority is so important uh, where your manager will tell you, I want you to do this. Yeah. And you try to come up with certain ways that you feel like, you know what, I feel like, you know, this would be better. It's like, that's not right. Now, you, you feel that you can't do it because, I mean, you have to be level-headed. Oh, no. Level-headed all the time yeah and then i think yeah that's something that you i had to struggle with for quite a while and sometimes you know after a discussion with the senior person i just walk out of the office and just go get some fresh air yeah and we'll get outside and breathe a little but that's something that you know they really don't teach you in school and how to deal with certain interactions as well yeah very true i think that's such you you were saying you were nodding your head as well you also have you you agree with that? What was it me or Kat? Well, both of you actually. Like, <laughs> you. Yeah. I I a hundred percent agree with it. Like hundred um, percent. And these are the things I really wish we were taught at a younger age. Mm. Um, the like you don't have to be shocked when you get to work and you realize all these things. Um, mm. I think we've even spoken about it. Where if these things were taught you at a younger age, it would really help you. Just mm into work like it doesn't have to be this difficult um and and such a shock but unfortunately right now um it is and unfortunately other people will have it way worse than other people um start off like um our other friend here she's not here now um i think when she started work it was like 10 times worse like they just threw her into the deep end and she what they were doing it just like it didn't exist anywhere so the, the team itself, you'd have older people there, more experienced people there that have never touched this stuff. And yeah. then now you're coming in as a graduate and you also have to now learn this stuff and you have to know it. And you can't even, it's not like high, uh, varsity rather where you can just be like, nah, heh, let me just drop this module. It's okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick some. Yeah, you got to do it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting paid for this, so you have to make a plan. Um, True. And it is like, and then some other people, they have it much easier. They have a nice manager. Um, she teaches you everything, and you just yeah. have a beautiful. Then you go back home, and you guys talk about these things, and you end up hating your friend now. Like, yeah, your life is nice. Eh? But like, <laughs> <laughs> there is no winning That's formula. So there is, but it's 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 uh, it's it's so good i'm so glad you're mentioning this stuff because um with with my students like when you know when i when i when i'm chatting to students when i lecture them and stuff i'm always like guys you know the management skills people skills your emotional resilience and your emotional intelligence and stuff you're all this they call it soft skills but i don't know why yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you know, that is very true it is hard like it is not easy and it takes one exactly as you say like the starting point is just to make you aware of that you know when you go to work you're going to come across situations that you find frustrating mm. doesn't matter whose fault it is but it's frustrating mm. what do you do with that mm. you, know, you, mm -hmm. you you're trying and it's not working now what like you say you can't just drop it and go i'll just spot for that in the exam and like i'm sure it won't come up you have to do it. So, like <laughs> how do you deal with confrontation how do you deal yes. with colleagues that don't like you how do you deal with managers that don't like you how do you deal mm -hmm. with you, when you don't know what's going on and you feel too stupid to ask someone because you're like i feel like i'm supposed to know this and i don't know it and now i need to go and ask someone what the hell i'm supposed to be doing but <laughs> I really don't want to admit that I don't know what the hell I'm yeah. doing when this is what you're paying me for. Like, yes. how do you deal with that? Like, that's extremely stressful and it can get in the way of your job. Like it gets in the yeah, way of, I don't mm. care like, you know, how amazing a, an accountant you are technically, 
if I can't get work out of you and if you burst into tears every time I look at you, um, or you throw your toys out the cart or you refuse to do what I tell you to do, yeah. then I'm like, there's the door, friend, you know, yes. <laughs> I kind of need yes. you in my life. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very true that that stuff, emotional intelligence, how do you have a different, as, I think by nature, again, both like IT accounting, we're kind of introverts by nature, which means we avoid conflict yes. if yes. we can. Like, We'll be like, yeah, okay, if you say so, that's fine. Chill. You know, we're like, I'm leaving. <laughs> when things get uncomfortable, I'm like, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just going to go back somewhere else. It's not yeah. a problem. Like, it's fine. Okay. How, no one's actually ever said, let's talk about how to have a difficult conversation. If I need, mm. like, how do you go to your manager and go, like, can we need, you know, we need to address something. How do you no, do so Go to your manager and be like, I need more money. No, your no, manager's I, like, yeah, me too. When you get a drive, tell me how you do it. Just have a kid. Apparently, you're more likely to get an increase if you have a, ch- uh, if you have a child. I don't, so, do you know ah! how much kids cost? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, to your point, uh, Yvonne, so I actually think because. Um, like from accounting perspective, um, you know, ethics uh, like is one of the yes. that we need to do. Um, I actually think that, yeah, ethics, I'm not saying it's bad, it's good. But I also think to your point, some sort of psychology or yeah. Yeah. social uh, science uh, um, module needs to be there to in order for us. Because ultimately we're dealing with people. I think there's not only even specific yeah. just uh accounting no not at all because we at the end of the day you're gonna meet people so you need to understand how different people and how they work how to drive input from them and derive input from them and 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 so yeah. forth and also to understand yourself and to yeah. uh yeah so i actually think it's just just one of those things yeah. that yeah, uh, she, she, uh, yeah I, I, I really i really agree it doesn't it doesn't decrease the importance of like ethics but the point is yes. more than that we yes need, yes we need yes. more than like don't don't steal yeah. the ipod yeah. off of your colleague's desk kind of thing like, yes you know yes 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 kind of, yeah so uh, yes. I, I i totally i totally 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 agree with you yes. so yes. um when you look at where you are now mm-hmm. and i mean none of us are like <clears throat> again when, when you're younger and when you're still studying you kind of feel like there's a moment where you've reached success yes you know, you're like one day when i whatever get my degree yes. graduate get a yes. job get the car yes. qualify yes. the ca like you're gonna go yes. then that's the day like i am successful how many times yeah. has that goalpost moved for you have you what have you reached that point where you're like i am a success I'm done i'm a success I can move to my next goal, but I'm like a success now. Like, do you acknowledge your achievements that way? Um, and two, like how many times has that goalpost shifted? So, um, I think personally, um, you know, uh, it starts when you, know, you pass high school, you're like, ah, but what's the, it's just high school. Uh, yep. you, get your, you, get, you get your degree, like, but you know, it's nothing to me right now. Yeah. Then you go through CTA and CTA was so hard, you know, it was super hard and you pass and you celebrate for that day and you're like, but I'm still not where I wanted to be. Uh, You go through your articles, they're like, you're CA now. Yes. But then, okay, what now? So, (laughs) (laughs) for me, I think. I did somehow, you know, celebrate those moments, but at not not any point in time did I feel like, you know, I've reached, you know, I'm successful now. I've yeah. reached a point, you know. Yeah. And I don't know at which point does one person uh, get, get to the no. point specifically. Because if you look at other uh, global industry leaders, you know, your Jeff Bezos, your Bill Gates, they're always striving for more. And you ask yourself, I'm only here and they still trying to get more. So yeah. at which point now do you, re- do you find success in? And I think for most people, 
and to make sure that you do not get into a point of depression where you try yeah. to get better, get better, like I'm not there, I'm not there. You, you, someone just needs to look back at his journey as well. Like, you know, I may not be there, but I've also accomplished so much yeah. in so much time and something to be proud of. But at the yeah. point of success, I don't think I felt that yet yeah, as to, oh, I'm a yeah. successful guy. And, yeah. and you meet, you know, you go back home and you meet people who look up to you. They're like, ah, oh, this guy is successful. I'm like, guy, there's no difference between me and you right yeah. now. Yeah. It's just, a, it's just dead. Yeah. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's feeling of success. Oof. I don't know, man. I think the other day I was speaking to Kat. Um, we had this conversation because we saw, was it your friend who posted the Mercedes Benz? RS7. The R, no, no, not the RS7. Oh, Remember the other one we were talking about? I was like in a car. Yes, yes. Yes. So he had these two friends and they were both like driving like brand new Mercs, right? Yes. They literally just bought them now. And yeah. We were talking about the and then we're like, do you have, like, do we consider the fact that you've made it once you've qualified, you yeah. know, you, you're like as a doctor, when you got your doctor's degree or as a CA, when you finally, uh, like did your articles and, and you finished everything yeah. and you just like an apartment and you have a car, um, and you have your dream job is, is that That's what we say? Because I was, I was like, I was like saying, no, like I'm still staying with him. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, well done. I have a car, but like I don't own, I don't, I haven't bought my own apartment. I'm still renting, but in my own way, I still feel like there is a form of a success that I have right now. Um, cause, cause, cause I, I decided to, to start a few companies with some friends, um, just startups, but like, yeah, there's that, there's that element to it. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's, it's like a relative term. Um, what what do we see success as? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I feel like some people just take it as a as a stepping stone, and I feel like some of us we will just uh, it, there's no such thing as success. There's just yeah. uh, success at the moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you're just gonna yeah. like, like how Lance was mentioning um, Jeff Jeff Bezos and and those type of people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know, hey, but. The one thing I, I do agree with Lance is that it, like that moment doesn't last very long when no, you get your, or when you get your professional qualification. Yeah. The moment doesn't last very long. Yeah. Before one day, two, two days, and uh, yeah, because you're already worrying about the next thing. Like you're already worrying, yeah, about, you're worrying about the next thing. Yeah. You're worrying about the next goal set up. Yeah. Yeah. As much as you're starting a professional career. Like life is actually very hard outside of your career. Yeah. There's other things that you need to consider now. Um, where you're gonna stay? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you not have a girlfriend? Um, do you have, does your family need stuff at home? And these all these things pile up, and then you're just looking at your degree, and you're like, can you handle, can you handle all of these responsibilities? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work. So um, yeah, yeah. Very good no. point. Very good point. Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. Yeah. For me, um, yeah, they they were I can say moments maybe where I felt well where there were certain goals that I defined for myself as if I attain them mm. it would be successful. But then I then realized that those are actually just goals and that actually success is actually it's a it's a, I would liken it to like, it's a spiritual experience in the sense that success is actually something that we, in we as humans conceive that would change us. We would feel a certain way or whatever. So um, like any other like spiritual experience, you, you will just keep longing for it and never yeah. really... Um, get it so yeah so for me if i give examples so like to what lance as, as well was mentioning is that like um it's keep passing like your grade 12 then passing with distinctions then getting my uh degree from vets in itself I was, it was like ooh, yeah I, 
I did something amazing and so forth. Then I think when I was working, because um, after like uh, leaving the, the CA route and everything else, like ultimately I was like, yeah, if I become a project manager and whatever, then life just accelerated that. It was like, it was like a five to 10 year uh, plan and yeah. it happened within two years. So then it was like, oh, snap. So oh. then now I sit back and be like, well, you came early. Uh, so when it now came, what? that, 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 because I think also the thing with success that uh, makes success so sweet or whatever is the fact that you've put in the work mm. out and whatever. Mm. You've got like a long story to like, you know, this yeah. Oh, and whatever but something that just just comes like that just doesn't also feel like yeah so then yeah so the, i've had those moments where I, the something that i perceived as a as a, uh, be successful if i uh, attained it yeah. but then i realized that actually it actually isn't that it's actually just a goal that it's actually yeah. success the spiritual experience where you yeah. feel something a change in you where it's like yes yeah i think that it's so it's it's such a good such a good way of putting it because you know like it is how you define success and what that feeling is for you of i achieved something that i didn't think i was going to or i managed to you know get something that was really really hard to do that other people struggle with or whatever um and i think i find it i find it quite sad and i think you know i find very prevalent in in south africa that for most young professionals or for most young students, the idea of success is measured by stuff. Yes. Uh, the car, yeah. the house, the, you know, like yeah. the clothes, the, the stuff. And that's yeah. so dangerous because yeah. that's where the debt yes. comes from. Yes. <coughs> you know? <laughs> 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 you know, like debit, credit, you know, that shit. Like, yes. anyway. So, um, <laughs> but I think, I think the reality is, you know, what ends up happening is we don't really realize that we're looking for an outward symbol of that, yes. of that feeling. You know, I want to yes. be able to let other people know, or yes. I, like, I, I want that as a feeling. I want that as a symbol of yes. the hard work yes. and the years yes. and, 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 yes. but I think, you know, I, I just, yes. I find it really sad. I see, you know, I see people qualify and, you know, or just before they qualify or just, you know, as they're yes. getting, and then they're buying the really expensive brand new cars and they're getting into debt. Yes. And I'm like, dude, you're on a hamster wheel that, you know, you're never going to get off of. Like, you're not getting off of that. And you just like, you know, the, some of the people for me that I know, some of the people that are in the most debt are the most well-paid. Because that's how it goes, right? Because you start off with, a, with like debt and then as you get the next promotion, you need a fancier car and a bigger house. And now you've got the kids because you thought that was a good idea financially, right? Um, and now it's the private schools and the bigger house and the holiday home and the overseas holidays. And, you know, you marry someone potentially and like create expectations of different lifestyles and you want to keep up that lifestyle and it gets more and more and more expensive. So no matter how much you're earning, you know, you could be earning like 300,000 rand a month. One, tax man takes a lot of that. You know, again, when you're studying, you don't think about the fact that in South Africa, tax man takes up to like 40, 45% of what you earn. That's like, you know, you, you're working over, you're working like five and a half months of your year, you work for the tax man. You know, that's it. Like, anyway, yeah. so, yeah. you know, like you're on a rat race of stuff to try and prove that you've arrived somewhere. And then mm. something like coronavirus happens. And <laughs> everything flat. Oof. And now you have no savings. You've got an expensive car to repay. Kids yes. are in private school. You've got this big it house. Is. And now what? Like, so I think, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people that are in a lot of trouble at the moment because it's like the years just go and I need to upgrade, 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 upgrade um, without thinking about, you know, like, because it's like an outward sign of success. If I live in Santa, I must be successful. Mm. Like, yeah. I think I think that also brings us back to the part where it's such things that they actually don't teach you in school. Yeah. yeah. Like how to manage your affairs or manage your life after this. I mean, they teach us all, but no one ever teaches you financial literacy, how yeah. to handle your affairs. You just go out there and you're like, man, I've, like you said, I've arrived. I've arrived People man. need to see that I've arrived. <laughs> and yeah. I, they can't see me arrive walking, so they gotta <laughs> see me in my work. And that time your mug takes like the bulk of your salary, 
Now you're in an apartment <laughs> with, no, yeah. with no furniture just because, you know, out there they know, no. Yeah. He's arrived now. And such things that they don't teach you in school. And it will be, it will really be a mind shift if such things were taught. And yeah. you did those things. And now, you know, I, if I did this right and I did this right, I save better. You know, yeah. I look for other opportunities, get, you know, dual in, uh, income streams, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I just build instead of, you know, always trying to spin, 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 just to prove a point to someone exactly. who doesn't even care about you. Exactly. Doesn't even Nobody care cares. About your journey. Yeah. And that they don't even know why no. you're doing this to begin with. So no. I think we, you only learn those things once you are knee deep in, in the it, like, yeah. then I've made the wrong decisions. Yeah, and true. by yeah. then, it's, I won't say it's too late, but it's harder than trying to, you know, Turn back the not turn back the time, but change your course of action. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it's and I think it's also it's very much we're unaware of the fact that it's very much a product of the society that we're in and where you are. So when when I lived in Joburg, and obviously, so I you know I, I, I lecture. So when I qualified, and then um, I started lecturing full time, I would um, arrive to to class. And I had a Mazda, like I drove a, it was really nice. I liked it. It was a Mazda 3, really nice. Mm. Yeah, brand new, but it's Mazda 3. You know? And my students were horrified. They were like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, you are, you are qualified, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> why are you driving a Mazda? I'm like, it's good. You know, uh, like, uh, you know, in, in terms of trade-ins, like it's, it's a very small percentage of my salary. So it's not like a massive amount. Like, it's good. It's a nice car. Like, yeah. It's cool, like leather seats, aircon. What more do you want from life? You know, this is great. Yeah. And they were horrified because you know that they could just couldn't quite comprehend like why you'd be a CA want to drive like a Mazda. You know, okay, fine. Mm. So I did. There was definitely that pressure of you know that people are looking, you know that people are mm-hmm. kind of like mm. assessing this. Then we moved to mm. Cape Town, and that was you know that's a whole different you know that's a different thing. People are kind of less interested in that a little bit. Mm. Then we moved, you know, we moved here to 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 montenegro a year ago yeah. and yeah. it's the most incredible thing like nobody gives a shit what you sure. like yeah. it really and i mean i remember i know that feeling of people kind of going oh so you're a what are you driving and like who's driving yes. what and who's people yeah. are looking for that and you can feel that whereas yes. here there's nothing so we you know when, when we moved here we're like we didn't really know where we we're going to live permanently blah 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 so we're like oh, we really need a car so we yes. went to we went and got a second hand car, which is a I think it's like a, a two thousand and four Renault Scenic. I mean mm-hmm. the thing is like old. And I mean it still works, even the air con still works, so it's great, it's fantastic. Um like you know, loads and loads of scratches, but it's, it just works, it's in good condition, it does the job. Um and I think what the, one of the reasons we got it was because we could get it it was like I think we paid like seventeen, eighteen hundred euros. So, yeah. Second hand. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, when you're getting a, like, a, sorry guys, can you just give me a moment? I need to. My battery's dying. I just need to get it charged. I will not uh, leave, but I'm just going to disappear that's cool. for a second. That's right. cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, it's, you, like, I don't care who sees me in the car. I don't care. It means nothing to me. Like, if someone looks at, no one's looking at you, going like, "What are you driving?" Why are you driving? Mm. And now I'm thinking, how many thousands of rand a month are you spending on Mm. something literally because of what other people are going to see you driving? Yes. And like, you know, how much of your decisions are made on the basis of what other people are thinking of you or what you want other people to think of you when, Mm. you know, you could be investing that money in your future and your side hustles and your jobs and like your work and your career, your, you know, like other, you know, other, other businesses and stuff that you want to, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a product of the society that we're in that you consciously have to unplug. Go like, mm-hmm. you know, are my decisions being made for me because this is what I want. And you know, the, the jag is going to fulfill that like spiritual success feeling for me personally, or is it because other people are going to see me in it? And like, you know, yeah. So I would say, cause it's like, there are two types of people or maybe, maybe even more than two. So, cause for others, it's not, uh, it's necessarily that of people, it's not, it has nothing to do with like public perception, but it's actually because of, um, desire. Like yeah. for example, yeah, I told myself that like it, when I earn 700 K, yeah. yeah. 
basically, I will drive a Merc or yeah. whatever. Yeah. See why I shouldn't you get because yeah, I yeah. To, to to drive a Merc. So I think um, yeah, that plays an L A yeah. an L, and that is obviously it goes back to that conversation of uh, financial literacy because. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, yeah. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but you want to do that smartly. You know, you want to sit down and think, okay, if I do this and my costs yes. and home and da, 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 you don't just want to go out and do it for the sake of it. Like, I don't, I mean, I, t- I totally agree. There's stuff that you're like, one day when I earn, I will be getting myself a, yeah, like, Cause, whatever, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. Because the scary thing, there's a very scary stat that I actually uh, read in, uh, some time ago in one of the articles that, uh, one of the most uh, heavily indebted people are actually people who uh, work at financial institutions. Oops. So, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay, it's, okay. it's either, so it's saying they either work at a financial institution or they have some sort of like finance degree or something. I'm uh, going to check that up. I want to see that. Uh, That's- it's, probably, <laughs> it's probably that they know something that we don't, you know. They yeah. know how to uh, Perhaps yes. I should ask you, you're you the CA. Tell us, there. tell us there. I, I should be asking both you and Yvonne. Yvonne, tell us there. Uh, so one, I have no debt. I have zero debt. Zero oh, debt. okay. Zero. <laughs> wow. Zero. Wow. Wow. We need to have you on our show then. <laughs> I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, I'm not, in, I did, you know, when I qualified, because, yeah, I think it's also part of this like, is also expectations of when you grow up. So, you know, we grew up and yes. um, our family, you know, our family wasn't doing very well. And we weren't, you know, we, yes. Yes. like nobody in my family's got a degree. And, uh, and then, you know, my, yes. my dad died when I was like 18, 19. I was looking after my mom. But there was that idea that it would be, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to qualify was financial stability. You know, like I want financial, I want to be able to look after my family. And so when I qualified, I bought a house. It was mm-hmm. like I bought a little townhouse, you know, it was, um, mm-hmm. I got like a, a really good deal in it and I, and I did some renovations. And because I was a CA, um, you know, Investec knocks on your door when you pass CTA um, and okay. says like, hey, hey, you know, and they were mm-hmm. amazing. Like Investec was incredible and still is like incredible to me. Um, so they mm-hmm. gave me like 120% bond on my, on, on the house and like I did renovations oh. and stuff. And so yeah, I felt that that was a, that's what you did as an adult. You know, that's what's yeah. like what you're supposed to do is buy the house and mm-hmm. then you, you're stable. You know, you have a house to live in that nobody can kick you out of and it's gaining capital appreciation and all these smart things and being an adult. I made like a 50% profit on the thing when I sold the house. Mm-hmm. So I sold it for cash, um, obviously settled all the debt and, you know, paid like, you know, mm-hmm. made, made a profit out of that. And um, I was like, I'm not, you know, not, not, doing, not doing that again. You know, like... Uh, but I don't do like, I don't do debt. Eh? I don't, so I would rather have a much smaller, less impressive lifestyle that I'm not worrying at the end of the month mm-hmm. that money that I've worked for, I've got to go hand over to someone else for something I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> like, I don't even remember what I, what I spent it on <laughs> signing money over to someone else. Like, that's just not, and it, it locks you up. So one of the reasons that I'm able to work for myself is that I don't have debt. So when I think of my monthly expenses, I'm like, okay, I have rent, obviously, you know, I've got rent and my like sell data and all the rest of that stuff. And, and I've got to eat and we have a lot of cats. Um, but you know, your expenses are a lot lower. So you can go and work for yourself when you don't have to pay, you know, car off and this and 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 the cards and, and and so it's it's yeah it's like no debt don't do debt it's a bad idea don't do drugs don't do debt oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm okay. laughs> not at the same time <laughs> don't get into debt to do drugs <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very true that's very true yeah no it is it's it's um it's a i think i, I find like of, of the places that I've visited and, and, you know, the places that I've been and lived in and stuff, mm-hmm. Joburg is like hyper, you know, Joburg is hyper, like, what do you have? Where do you live? What are you driving? You know, like how successful are you and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's tricky to unplug from the expectations of other people, but you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. So I, I agree. Like we need some financial literacy, debits, credits, and your credit card. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do that. So, so since you guys are 
since you guys are, are, are incredibly open about, uh, you claim that you're incredibly open, I'm not going to ask you how much money you make because although that's what everybody wants to know, the question, <laughs> not, not, not as much as you think. <laughs> the question I have for you, would you marry a professional? So like, would you marry a CA? Would you marry someone that is equal to you professionally above you? Someone who is like earns more than you is more qualified than you. What are you looking for? Would you marry someone that you would work for more qualified than you <laughs> earns more money than you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're going to have some thought. <laughs> Yes, I, I would, I would. Um, reason being that if anything, society is working, actually moving towards empowering women also financially. So yeah. in one way or the other, if it's not now, it's bound to happen through either a promotion or something that she will get. Right. So yeah, Jeff, so I've already opened my mind to that from the onset. Then. Yeah. Yeah, with regards to, uh, I know you mentioned, maybe you want to know, like, in terms of earnings that people yes. to earn. Yes. So I can just give them, like, yes. typically, so typically, like, from as far as I'm aware, like, currently, like, in 2020, if you're qualified CA, um, you'd earn anything between 550 and about, like, 650. Uh, that's, like, the general median. And yeah. so so i don't know that answers uh, that question for those people it does. Who thank you get that, or wondering how much uh, they will be earned so that's in like yeah South African yeah yeah that is. and so are we marrying are we marrying a professional are we marrying someone more qualified than you um, oof. Oof. well for me i don't think i'm ever gonna get married um, oh really why because <laughs> uh, i had the opportunity to and I messed it up already. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I don't think I'll ever find something special anymore. So, oh, but if no, so yeah, okay, it's <laughs> cool. cool. We'll just leave it at that. We won't even ask you how much you earn since you're clearly <laughs> in a bad uh, Like I told you. Uh, um, like I don't really earn a lot, but uh, I am able to live, you know, a comfortable life. Yeah. I, you know, I, I can afford whatever thing that I want. Yeah. Yeah. I need. Yeah. So I think where I am right now and how much I earn is, you know, proportional. Yeah. But you know, we always want more. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, because you've got a lot of debt that you've got to pay off. And, and yeah, so currently, I think I'm in a position where I'm, you know, be able to look around and be able to move forward without anyone telling me that, no, yeah. you, you, are, you know, you're highly paid. We can't afford you. Yeah. You see, because uh, yeah. you don't want to be in a position where people start saying, yeah, no, if they pay you too much, I can't afford you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes it limits your career progression as well. Yeah. Okay, yes, so I mean, you you gave us a a sort of ballpark figure of like five fifty to six hundred newly qualified CA. Since you are the newly qualified CA, do you agree with his ballpark figure? Yeah. Uh, so, because it works out uh, to like about forty five fifty k a month. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, um, from so I think most of my fellow qualified CAs would agree and say that's basically the way mostly qualified CA play around and I've seen it a lot of times as well. Yeah. Um, I guess some people are just lucky that you know you get to a point where you're able to negotiate, mm. uh, you know, put your best foot forward, uh, show them a certain portfolio of why you deserve to get more than that. And I've seen also people who've been able to do that. But yeah, I agree with this ballpark figure of between 550 and 650. But also maybe some would even say that it's just between 550 and 600. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just a matter of how you, you actually just negotiate yeah. those things, yeah. how you show your importance and what you actually bring to the team. 
yeah. uh, what you've done and what you're going to do, a sort of things which really elevate your evaluation of yourself and, you know, people see you in a different light. And, like, you might be newly qualified, but you've done so in much that, you know, makes you yeah. stand out from the rest. Yeah. Yeah, and it it, re- it really does depend on like on what you're doing and what you choose to do and stuff as well. Because um, yeah, I mean, when when I qualified, I, I went into um, I went into lecturing full time, and you certainly you know you're not earning that type of money. <laughs> 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 Give us a ballpark figure for um, people who want to become like because uh, also a lecturer. A lecturer, yeah, yeah. it's true. It, Look, um, I think it's, it's it's different in you know like. Yeah, universities um, and yes. like I, I worked for um, a uh, private tuition provider. I worked for FLB. Um, so, you know, it's like working for Varsity College versus going to work for UNISA kind of thing. Yeah. So I think over the years, there's been like a little bit more, you know, there's like a little bit more similarity. But yeah, mm-hmm. when, when, when I went, um, I, was, I was sitting probably... Um, uh, yeah, probably about like four twenty, four like four twenty, four fifty kind of thing. This when, is after you qualified yeah, as a lecturer. Yeah, yeah after I qualified as a CA. Yeah. No, no, I was yeah, I was a qualified CA. I so I started lecturing um, while I was still uh-huh. doing articles, and I, I loved lecturing, like I loved teaching. And um, so instead of staying with the firm, or instead of looking for you know another job. Uh, with with anyone else, I, I went into into lecturing full time, and obviously, the, you know, part of it is it doesn't, you know, part of it is also just understanding the affordability of the company that you're working for. You know, they may love you, and 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 and, but the reality is, this is what we can pay for that, you know, for that position. So um, it was it was a trade off between like what I really really loved doing, knowing that it wasn't going to be the big money, and was I okay with that? You know, like was I, you know, was I prepared to do that? And um, yeah, I, I did made the you know i made the move uh took you know took the took, took the job and I, I mean i don't i don't regret it i think you could you know you could i'd be a lot more unhappy if i was earning you know double the salary and hating my job kind of yes kind of, yes yes you know, so then like if i may ask do you then perhaps know because um most universities like uh, even the ca stream like you can serve your articles and become yes. an academic yeah uh, at a higher learning uh, yeah. institution. So what is then the, the ballpark? Uh, uh, you know, like, I don't know that you can compare my experience with, with like anyone else's. I was chatting to, um, I don't know if you know Vincent Motolo. He was a um, UNISA lecturer. He lectured auditing at, at UNISA and he, he's now a partner with, with, with um, SMG Grant Thornton. And yes. I was chatting yes. to him um oh, two weeks ago i think and he was talking about you know the, the offer that unisa made him um mm. was actually like they started off by like not really giving him market rate and what he could earn in commerce mm. so he said no and they came back to him and they were like we really really want you <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't pay you. so he was he was fairly good at the yeah he i think he was fairly yeah. good at the negotiation stuff um so uh, and I think, you know, o- over time, the universities have had to, you know, even out and, you know, had to, had to kind of get to, to market related stuff. So I, yes. I don't yes. think that, I don't think that it's very far off, but I, I can't, I'm not, you know, I don't, yeah, I, um, I can't, I can't give you verifiable I think, information. I think as an, like, kid, as, as, a, as, an, as, as an AL, on a, I forgot what an academic. Yeah, yeah. once you qualify, basically you qualify, you go to a certain auditing firm. But in your yeah. first year, instead of you know doing your articles, you just go back to the university yeah. of choice. Yeah. Um, I think the the only you still earn what you would at the auditing yeah. firm as yeah. a first year trainee. Yeah. It's just move now yeah. into a into a lecture to, to the university so there's not really my, I, i've heard that you there's some things that you do you get certain bonuses whatever the case may be yeah. but there's not much of a difference between no. the two no from from what i understand then, there isn't there isn't really and your academic articles is only as far as i know it's one year so you do one a, year at the university and then you have to go and do articles at the at a firm you know like anyway you've got to do two years somewhere else anyway so so like uh, if 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 we if we sort of wrap up our discussion 
um, for, for now. And I think, um, like I do with most of, 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 of my videos, if anybody watching this has specific questions <laughs> about <laughs> stuff other than your love life, because apparently, like, no love life and no money discussion. <laughs> it wasn't a no discussion. I told you, Mr. <laughs> I know, you, know, people are, you know, people are like they're more interested in your love life. Like they want to know about your love life. They don't actually want to know about the qualification. Like, tell me what. Yeah. Tell me what you did. Tell me how you screwed up. You know, like <laughs> other, than, <laughs> other than love life, other than money. If people have questions that they want us to discuss. Um, then, you know, leave a comment in the videos, leave a comment underneath the article, and then we can have, you know, we can set up another session and talk about other stuff. Um, so, like, the, hopefully this isn't going to be the last time that, you know, that, that, that our chats you dudes, which, which, is, which, which will be cool, if lockdown continues, because if lockdown disappears, then obviously... Be gone! You've got better things to do. We're always ready. Yeah. Okay. So... Where you are at the moment, it's, I think it's, it's really interesting and realistic that you're sort of saying, look, I don't feel like I've arrived, you know, but let's be honest, statistically, especially in South Africa, statistically, you guys are sitting in like the top, top 1% of the country. 1% like of the education, country. Education, you know, educationally, uh, earning wise, earning potential, careers, et cetera, et cetera. So that feeling that we spoke about, you know, whatever, like we understand where that comes from, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is you guys, you guys are doing awesome. Were there times in your journey, because it's really easy to look at stuff now and go, okay, but all wherever I am, it kind of went out. Okay. Were there times in your journey that you were like, this is, this is it. Never happening. Like give up. Not going to happen. Yeah. Can't see. <laughs> can't see past this. Don't know yeah. how it's ever going to come right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah? I, yeah? Uh, CTA. Oh, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> CTA was just that devil, you know. It's like when someone has their foot on their neck and rest in peace, rest in peace George Floyd, I'm not just talking about that. But yeah. it was so hectic for me yeah. that every day after class, I felt like I was literally burning, you know. Really? Um, I didn't see a way in which I was going to actually pass this thing. Really? I didn't see how I was going to make it. And it's not yeah. because, you know, when you, you've got like four modules and now the, the other three, they feel you going well. But it's just that one beast, you know, <laughs> like the whole year, yeah. you only passed, you only managed to pass one class test the whole year. <laughs> I feel you. I feel now, you. Now you write the exam, now you write the exam and you still fail it, and now you're just waiting for the sub. Oh. And I think in the entire CTA, uh, um, that specific module which was financial management sciences. Surprise! <laughs> I passed just the class test, and I passed the sub. Okay, and that's it. Damn. That's it. Damn. So I, know, what, yeah. I think we had like three year tests, five class tests. And <laughs> the exam we have two sets of exams. Yeah. I only just passed two of those things. And I think at some point during the year I used to just sit there and be like, but clearly I can just get I can still make it in life with just my degree. Right. Like, yeah. I tell myself that there was there's no reason for anything to ever be this hard in life. Yeah, yeah. And Damn it, it was hard. It's but nice. after yeah. you know, when you look, when you look back and you know you're like, you know what, it was hard for a reason. Because yeah. Yeah. the amount of doors that it opened to you, yeah. uh, you know, now you get to be with other people who've got through these things, you meet other people who are, like you said, in the top one percent. You yeah. don't want it to be like that, obviously, but unfortunately that's the relate of where you are. It is, it is. And for me, to get to where I am right now and be able to, you know, make my parents, my mom proud, make, you know, whoever yeah. Yeah. was there for me in my corner proud. I had to go through that. Yeah. But at that moment, going through it, it, it didn't feel like, it felt like, you know what, maybe this is the end of the road. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm just happy that I kept on going. I never yeah. actually stopped, but it yeah. was really that monster for me. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. CTA was, 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 was very similar for me where 
it's easy for people to look at you after you've passed the stuff and go, yeah, but it was fine for you. Like, no, like you say, you know, you passed one class test in the sub. For me, um, for, for both Manic and tax, I sucked at financial management and I sucked at tax. And um, I also, I passed one test during the year and um, I managed to pass the final. But then, you know, that means the whole year, I'm like 20%. <laughs> 30% <laughs> you know and I got a distinction in the stuff in undergrad like you know Manak I got a distinction in undergrad and all of a sudden oh, like no, I'm at to 20 I'm like yeah. I'm gonna fail I'm never gonna get this right like I can't I just can't see how this could ever come right like it's never gonna come out and it's important for people to to hear that because when you're sitting in a place going it's never gonna come right there is hope you know, don't think that you're the only person that's going, this is never going to come right. Just because you can't see that at the moment doesn't mean that it's not there. So yeah, uh, uh, I hear you. I feel your pain. And uh, you do the same thing. Like there were times you were like, this is not going to happen for me. Yeah. So for me, uh, basically it was just yeah, the entire third year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So because yeah, basically, um, you know that if you fail one yes. module, Tickets. yeah, you have to, not that you have to repeat that module only, yes. you have to repeat every Everything. module. That yeah. part was just unsettling because now it's <laughs> not, now you're just adding also a financial burden yep. True. to, <laughs> to yeah. who is paying for you and so forth, or you lose your buzzery basically. Yeah. Uh, well, so it's just it was that, and yeah, because uh, every module, like I had it ups and downs with it in third year. So auditing uh, for me, hence that's when I knew that actually <laughs> this is not. <laughs> I I didn't pass a single test. Okay. Pass a single assignment. Ooh. I literally passed the end of year. Exactly. And that is all that counts. <laughs> and and, and uh, I'm not embarrassed to say this. No, no. It was probably a 48 or 49. Then they looked at it. Like, <laughs> you know what? He attended every tutorial. <laughs> attempted every tutorial. We can give him that extra percent or two. So that he's good. It was probably just there. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Like, that's fine. Like, that's good. Yeah. Take it. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah so also uh with um uh financial management oh sorry not financial management uh management accounts because financial management actually that's yeah. what i was good at so hence i thought uh i was yeah. gonna be alien billions or something yeah so uh yeah for, uh man management accounting second year did well did very great then in third year things got a bit like tricky yeah so, yeah yeah so there, there's moments i actually thought like maybe i should have studied it then, <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> surprise surprise at the, the university with an accounting degree only to end up in it <laughs> yeah. which is actually something that um i don't know in future episodes we can yes. We can touch on because even for chartered accountants, they can become business analysts as yeah. well. Yes. Uh, for example, when I started, uh, they were particularly looking for CAs. Yeah. Is that not a CA? Then yeah. Sometimes, if you can display those competencies, yeah, to, uh, or articulate yourself well enough in an interview, you can yeah. be uh, very I fortunate. Agree. Yeah, we definitely, I think we, we definitely want to have more discussion a, 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 a bit more about like your actual jobs and stuff and the industries yes. that you're in and, and, you know, the career options around that type of thing is um, yes. so valuable yes. as well. So yes. we're definitely going to have more on that. But so before, before we say cheers, your moment of like, oh crap, this is not going to happen. Ooh, this was actually when I started working. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So this is when I started working. Um, Actually, did very well in varsity. I passed everything. Ah, uh, screw you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably on this list. <laughs> Not like that. But, uh, 
I, I, my mug was okay. Like, um, it was, yeah, I didn't have that issues. Um, but then when I started working, I was placed into a team where our, we had like a very bad manager. So what happened there was, um, so in IT, like we, we, we see ourselves as important people when we can put things into production. So meaning people are actually using yeah. whatever systems that we've put into place. So the team we're in, um, we would never get to that point uh, ever. That's frustrating. For two years, mm-hmm. I had a single item in production. So then I got like frustrated and I didn't see a way out. Yeah. What I ended up doing was like, I applied, you can ask Kat, I applied to like over like 30 companies. I went to like over 15 interviews, like in a day, I probably have like one or two interviews every single day. And you know, you just kept getting rejected by all these yeah. companies. Yeah. But you just, you just wanted to find a way out so that yeah. you can prove to yourself. Cause like you end up doubting your skills. Yeah hearing about what other people are doing. Oh no, man, we just created this cool app where if you tap someone's phone, then you yeah. can <laughs> Meanwhile, you're there. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, no, what, what's for nice, right? <laughs> so, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it, it, it does dent your confidence a lot. Of course, yeah. Uh, you end up doubting your skills a lot. And it, it even showed in the interviews because there's a lot of oh. and when you add work, which yeah. we could actually get to because we were never exposed to any yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, because it just never got to that point. So, yeah, uh, eventually I found a job. Funny enough, the only one I didn't apply for. Um, but I got a... <laughs> I got a referral. a big question. I got a referral. I got an interview. Killed it. Second awesome. Two. Yeah, killed it. And then I'm... I mean, um, and it's been a good journey since then. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like, it gets tough. Hard, dude. Tough, but you just gotta... It does. And it. It's, it's, it teaches you patience and it teaches you all this other soft stuff, all these other skills, emotional resilience and management. Da, 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 da. But I think for, for my students, because, you know, most of my students are sitting in the studying space where they're, you know, studying for exams or going to write exams and they're in that space of like, I'm never going to get this right. And it makes them, as you say, like you doubt your confidence, you doubt your, maybe I've chosen the wrong career. Maybe I've chosen the wrong thing. I shouldn't have done this. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, um, and I think it's so important that people that have passed that journey are honest about the fact that they also struggle because it's so easy to stand up and go, yeah, I nailed that. Like you want to, you know, you want to stand up there and go like, oh man, CTA was a piece of cake. Like, you know, I didn't struggle. I was okay. You know, but the problem is everybody else looks and goes, oh, shit, I'm not okay. And, you know, yeah. she said it was so easy. So therefore doesn't mean that I'm stupid. Like, you know, so I want more people to be honest about the fact that everyone has those moments of, I can't see past this. Like, I can't see how this is actually going to work out and hanging in there, getting help, finding out, you know, getting the resources, and you made a plan. Like, I'm not happy with where I am. Let me go get a job. I mean, I'm just going to sit here forever and bitch about how unhappy I am. I'm going to do something about it. Um, find a way to solve the problem or whatever. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with going through those moments of, oh, crap, this is never going to come right. It yeah. does not mean yes. that it will not come right. It will come right eventually, like yeah. somehow. Yes, yes. Awesome. James, thank you very much for your time uh, this evening uh, since you couldn't go anywhere. Um, <laughs> this is like better than TV. <laughs> better oh, than I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, again, for, for, anybody, for anybody watching, if you have any specific discussions, if you have any specific questions um, that you want us to, to, to discuss, um, let us know and we can we can reconvene and um, you can find some friends for us to for, for us to chat to as well um, so we get to chat to more people on the ground that are yeah. like doing yeah. stuff um, yes. you know you don't always <laughs> want to hear from people that qualified like 15 years ago <laughs> you want to know what's going on like now yeah. awesome so yeah thanks guys very much I will put um, links 
to the YouTube videos that I watched. I'll put links into the article and stuff so that they can see what you guys are up to and all the little dodgy discussions that you have in the background. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Good, good luck on that one. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your time.